here's a look what I'm going to be making today. It's just a basic kaleidoscope effect within Spark AR. Uh, I've made it using 3D geometry from Cinema 4D that I put together using the MoGraph module. If you don't have access to Cinema 4D or any interest in it, then I will provide um, some exported files that you'll be able to use and I'll make a, just a few different versions uh, to have a look at. Uh, I'll also provide the uh, project files for this so it will all be in the description below. In Cinema 4D, I'm going to first start by going Command or Control D, bring up my project settings and I just want to change my project scale from uh, centimeters to millimeters just so when I bring my geometry into Spark it's not ridiculously huge. Then I'm going to put in a sphere. I'm going to change the type of that to icosahedron and put the segments down to three. That's the sort of shape that I'm after. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to make that just radius of five centimeters. I'm going to put that within a MoGraph cloner, which is this. So to drop that, make that a child of that. And then in the object, I'm going to choose radial and change the plane to X and Y. So this is basically the view from sort of within Spark. This is just sort of view looking this way. That's looking pretty good. I'm just going to make that, just turn it up. I'm going to make that a count of six. And let's make that a fair bit bigger. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my project 301 frames is how long I want it to animate across. And, and if I click on my clone, it basically I'm just going to start rotating things, bringing them to life. There's no real sort of exact science to what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it up. Uh, and then the the different ways you affect it is how you'll get a different sort of looks. So I'm just going to change that to 360 and then minus 360. Um, minus 360. Ah, in the scale. All right, sorry. I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. So let's have a look. So yeah, I'm just getting some rotation happening there. I'm going to chuck that within another cloner. I'm just going to keep putting these within cloners. Now you do have to be a little bit cautious here because the more uh, times you clone this and the more geometry you get in the scene, the more ridiculous uh, the frame rate is going to drop to. So I've chucked that inside another cloner. Uh, change it again to radial. I'm going to change the radius to say 30 make that a count of six again and then uh, let's leave my plane as that is go over to the transform and you can just sort of click and drag uh, in these boxes here just to have a look at the sort of effects you might get all right that looks pretty good so go back to frame zero again uh, set that to back to zero set a keyframe put that over that one to another keyframe go along to my 301 and change that to 360. Now the reason I'm using 360 is because I want this to be a perfect loop. Uh, let's go minus 360. Uh, let's just have a little look at it if I just play that back. Yeah, so this is the type of effect that I'm going for. It's got these sort of just uh, swirling shapes. And now it currently has a, an ease in and an ease out. I'll get rid of, the, rid of that in a minute. I'm just gonna drop that into one more cloner. Another cloner, drop it in, make it a child. Back to radial. Put the count up to six again. And then I am going to change the plane to be the XY. All right, now we're starting to get the sort of look that I'm after. Let's have a look at the radius. So one thing I can also animate is this radius. So let's say, let's keep start that at minus 14. Go back to frame zero, set a keyframe, and then I want to go to my 301 and then set another keyframe because I want it to start and stop at the same. But in the middle here somewhere, let's say frame 170, I want it so it's basically going to animate out and then it's going to animate back in. So that looks pretty good. Set that there. Let's have a look how that's looking. It's going to play back a bit slow, but yeah, that's basically the look I'm after. I'm just going to go to my sphere 
couple of things I'm going to do. I'm just going to make the size just a little bit bigger on it. That's uh, probably big enough. Now I'll chuck a material on it. Just come down here and then go create material, new standard material. Just click and drag that across the sphere. And I don't need to do anything else to that because I'm going to deal with the uh, material within Spark. But the material does need to be there. Now, that's basically the effect that I'm going for. But I just want to sort out those keyframes, the easing on them. So if I just go Shift and then F3, brings up my timeline. And I want to select all of my keyframes because they currently got this uh, easy ease on them by default. I want to select them all, but I don't want to select the middle one there. Hang on a second. There we go, got it. And then, so they're, they're, they're currently uh, defaulting to yeah, easing, so I just want to turn them to linear keyframes. And that is just going to take that easing out. So what that will do, that will mean, so if I just come to the end here and play, it should just create a nice perfect loop and just keep the, the velocity going. Now the reason I've done 301 frames is because it goes from 0 back to 360, but I want that just to go 300 frames. So it animates across 301 because the what is uh, happening at the 301 frame is also happening at zero so I'm just going to press uh, 300 so hopefully that makes sense just it's an e one extra frame there uh, now that is pretty much it but the last thing we have to do and this is the sort of big trick with all this it, so if you just export that as an FBX over to uh, Spark it, it will lose all the animation so we need to just right click on that cloner and then come down here and then bake as Alembic and delete and this is going to ask you to put that file somewhere. Let's just chuck that in my kaleidoscope. That is going to take a little while. So I'll let that do its thing. Uh, and then once that has done its thing, that'll be ready to send it over to Spark and texture it. My cloners have now been baked down. So to get them into Spark, I've just got to file export as an FBX. Um, I just go with those standard settings, they seem to work. I'll just OK that. Um, chuck that, there we go. C4 D FBX, yes, that will do. Um, export that out. Now, so, um, yeah, if you don't have Cinema 4D, I will provide uh, a few of these. I'll just make up a few random, ran random things and I will put them in the description below. So, I jump over into Spark now. And then got a, just a brand new project here. Um, import it in. Uh, kaleidoscope c4d.fbx. It's coming in at 3.5 meg. They come in at a decent size. Um, they do seem to play back okay though, but there is a fair bit of geometry in there. Uh, I've just got to drag that up into my scene. It's come in a little bit too big. And it's also. Let me just scale that down a little bit. That looks pretty good. First thing I will do is I will turn the animation track on, just clicking on that in Cinema 4D, coming across to animation and then creating new animation controller. And then it's brought in that animation from Cinema 4D. It looks like it's all coming nicely, which is good. And then over in my material, if I click on that there, this is a material that I made within Cinema 4D, but I didn't uh, do any settings to. Uh, it's 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 made it flat, so I'm just gonna make that standard just so we can sort of see what's going on. There yeah, we can see them, see them all there. Now to get the um, uh, so yeah, there's numerous things that you could do there. You could just um, add add some sort of material here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extract out the camera texture. So I'm gonna do that by clicking on camera. I'm just gonna pause that for now. Clicking on camera and then coming across here to texture extraction. Just pressing that button and that's extracted out the camera texture that is seen and then it brings it down here if I then go back to my material and come up to the texture I can then choose the camera texture and you should be able to see that uh, what is being seen there is now being projected on to the geometry and there's a few um, different things you can do here here I'll 
flick this over and you can see, there we go, there I am. So this is a little bit more of like how it actually might look in the real world. Uh, and that's basically it. It's basically the, the kaleidoscope effect there. You've got lots of different things that you can um, you can tweak in your material. One thing I will do, which will uh, just show you a different thing that you can do with it. I'm just going to add in a if I add in a face mesh, that also puts in a face tracker. So you can see that's tracking my face there. But I actually don't want the mesh. Well, it actually could be interesting, but I'm just going to turn it off for now. But what I do want is the texture extraction so yeah so i've clicked on the face tracker if i just press the uh, plus there that's extracted out that face tracker texture so then i can go back to my material and i can either choose the camera texture or the face tracker texture just to get a little bit more of an interesting effect yeah so yeah if you wanted to get really interesting you could put in face mesh and then on the face mesh I could add in a material I could actually just put that material on there there we go there's something else <laughs> uh, I'll turn that off for now uh, back on the material you can look at sort of tweaking some of these settings but this is a, a, a bit of a different sort of thing but yeah that's the the basics overview of how to make this uh, kaleidoscope effect in spark ar